What is the crack, everybody? My name is Jacob Potato, and after one week's hiatus, I return. I'm kind of sorry for disappearing just randomly for no apparent reason whatsoever. There was a little bit of a reason. Um, my editing software, which is Movie Studio Platinum, it kind of ran out, and it takes more than a week for it to arrive at my house. So, eventually it arrived, and now I am back. I am back on the interwebs, and I have a new topic today, but also with my final random video of Call of Duty Black Ops 2. This will be one of the last videos, unless it's for my friends, that I will be posting of Black Ops 2, because when I'm playing this game by myself, I am just bored to tears. I just can't find this game fun anymore unless I'm playing with people that I know. But I went on tonight, got two decent games. Um, the first one is Domination on Meltdown, I think that one's called. Got a good KD, got a good couple of clips. And the second game is, I want to say, Sabotage on Hijacked, which pretty much is the new Nuketown of Black Ops 2. But I think everyone's well aware of that. But um, anyway. Yeah, so this would be the last Black Ops 2, unless it's for my friends for a while, but I decided to go out with a bang. <laughs> but the topic I'm going to talk about today is, with the recent announcement of the PlayStation 4, like a month ago, I have been kind of thinking, you know, what am I going to get at the end of the year? What will Jack and Potato be playing in 2014? And... To be completely honest, I've been looking at everything. I've been looking at the PlayStation, I've been hearing all the different rumours about the Xbox, and I've been looking at my own PC. And, well, to be honest, I think it'll it's really only a decision between the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox 720 slash Durango slash Microsoft Cash Cow. Because I'm not going to get rid of my PC. I've built my PC with my own two hands. I bought all the parts. I researched everything. Spent like a year waiting to get this thing done. And I built it all myself. So the PC will probably stay in. I've got War Thunder. I've got uh, Planet Side 2. I've got Amnesia. Can't wait to get a couple of videos of that done. So it's really only between the PS4 and the 720. And taking everything that I've heard about the two consoles into consideration, I'm really thinking the PlayStation 4 is going to be the way to go. Sadly, I've always been an Xbox person since like three or four, since like, the Xbox 360 came out, I've been playing it. Um, I chose it over the PlayStation 3 and eventually when the Slim came out I had a bit of extra money and I went and got it. Mainly for the PlayStation 3 exclusive games like God of War which I bought for like £12 a game seal and played three ep episodes, level ofs, got bored of it. But I've been playing Nino Kune and I've been playing... Tales of Vesperia, I downloaded Infamous, I got Ratchet and Clank, really loving all them games. Just hearing all these rumours about the Xbox 720 is really putting me off it. And I'm really getting disappointed with the way Microsoft has decided to conduct themselves with all this. If you don't know, the Xbox 720 is supposedly going to be always online with DRM. I'll be talking about what that means in a minute. And it's also supposedly, this is all rumours, nothing is proven yet, going to block used games. I'll get into the whole reason why I don't like this idea of banning used games. Not because of the effect that it's going to have my wallet, but really the long-term effects, which some people may not really think about. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is this whole always online DRM thing. Now, if you don't know what that is, the always online DRM is a system that causes the game to be only able to be played online, connected to the internet and connected to the servers located in, well, in this case, Microsoft. If you hadn't heard last couple of weeks ago, not last week, maybe the week before, SimCity 3 was released. Now, that there game is supposed to be a single player game. There's no reason for it to be online. But the developers, in their almighty wisdom, decided to make this game a supposed social experience. Now, this game has no reason to be played online with other people. It is SimCity. You make a city yourself, and you develop a city yourself. You have no need to have to 
communicate with some city across the world. Yes, that is a really cool feature, but it is not needed. So there is no re need to have this always online. And because this game was always online, it caused serious issues with the servers. And then there were mass lockouts of people not being able to access the game on day one. This also happened with the, uh, Diablo 3. People got the error 303 or something, and they couldn't play the game, and this caused mass uproar. But the thing about it is, developers really aren't learning from this. They are only putting this DRM thing on so nobody can copy their content. Yes, this is fair enough, but it's no reason to punish the rest of us for the actions of a couple of stupid people. Now don't get me wrong, I have no issue with the console always being online. Normally when I play the Xbox, the first thing it does is send me on the Xbox Live. So that's not really a problem for me. The problem that I have is, if the console can only be played online, then what happens if my internet cuts out? My internet connection is 2 meg at peak times, like this is when it's at its highest speed, it is at 2 meg. That doesn't affect me when I'm playing Xbox Live. But there are days when it's really bad weather, like the snow, it's been snowing like mad in the UK at the minute, and things like that can affect the connection of the internet. So if the internet cuts out, what am I meant to do? How am I meant to play the games that I want to play? How am I meant to play things like Bioshock Infinite if I have to connect online? How am I meant to play things like the uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag if I have to play online? That's not fair. They're not really considering people who don't have 23 megabyte download speeds constantly throughout the day. They're not thinking about people like... Us, who live out the countryside. There's a bit of information for you all, by the way. But my main gripe with what Microsoft are potentially doing, as I said, this is none of this is confirmed, so please take all of this with a grain of salt. What Microsoft are going to do, which is going to potentially ruin the Xbox for me and any hope of me buying it, is banning used games. Now, I enjoy used games. I like going into my local CEX. CEX, by the way, um, is a used game shop, but also sells DVDs, it sells PS2 games, it sells GameCube games. It's always just really interesting to go in and have a look about and see what you can find. Normally I can walk up to the counter and say, have you any anything interesting there? And they can show me a half decent game and I, then I would consider buying it. The reason why I don't like this idea, yes, when the new consoles come out, the, the the prices are getting raised up. I think that has been confirmed. They're going to be like £50 or $70, whatever that is in, in America. I'm not entirely sure, sorry about that. Bar the effect that it's going to have in my pocket, it's going to have a serious effect on game retailers around the world, not just in America. Over here we have Game and CEX. They would be the two main game distributors. CEX is mainly for its used games and games do the retail brand new stuff. Well that's how it works for me, I go to CEX, get the used games, play them for a while, take them back. You don't get great money for them but you're still getting a game that you really want to play at like £15 when it normally is in the shops at the minute for like 25 or something. It's, norm it's a good way of working it. And then you get the retail games and game. But the problem with that is CEX, regardless of what you think, um, I'm sorry for saying this fanboys, but when you walk into a CEX shop, the majority of the games in there are for the Xbox 360. Whether that's because the Xbox 360 games are worse, I don't know, I'm not getting in a fanboy war at the minute, that's a different topic altogether. But as I said, when you walk into CEX, the majority of the games are Xbox 360. And when you walk into game, it's mostly the same. So if Microsoft then decide to ban used games, then that is going to be at least a 30% decrease in the profits of both game and CEX. And this will affect CEX the most because if they don't have pre owned games to sell, then they're going to be losing a lot of profit, which then means the companies the company are going to have to close down shops. Now that is the issue for me. The Microsoft whether you like it or not, Microsoft know this. Microsoft know that their used games will make other companies less money. And the thing about it is they don't 
care. Game will lose out in uh, profits and they're doing really badly as it is. They recently went into administration and were bought out by another company. And CEX is this great little shop where you can go talk to other gamers about games and get good games at low prices. Games that are still working and there's nothing wrong with them. Yes, if you're going into a shop and the used games were useless and they were all scratched and horrible, then that might be a good idea to get rid of used games. But they're not. They're still playable. They're still great fun. There's nothing wrong with them. And that's the problem. The Microsoft know that by removing used games, companies are going to start pushing their games towards Microsoft more. So then that could also mean that Microsoft would get games before they're even released on the PC or the PlayStation 3, which then would mean more money for the developers, and then that would mean Microsoft would be getting more money in as well. Because developers don't get money off used games. When you give in a used game, it then belongs to that shop, whether that GameStop, that CEX, that game, whatever. That then belongs to them, so then they make whatever money they can off it. The, the developers don't get anything. So that's why Microsoft is doing this, because they know that the developers will start to push their games towards them more compared to the PS4 or the PC, which both allow used games. And the saddest thing about this all, it all delves down to Microsoft wanting more money to line their wallets with. I'm going to get a wee bit Christian here. <laughs> Um, I know I would hope that I have a both a non-Christian and a Christian fan base. I hope that it's not just all Christians listening to this. So I'm going to kind of explain this for both the non-Christians and the current Christians should know what I'm talking about already. But for Christians, money is not, a, you know, not the bane of our lives. Money is not the focus of our lives. It may be strange for you to comprehend this. But money is important to us, it's important to keep us living, it's important for our day-to-day -day lives. But it is not the focus of our lives. Which is the thing for these companies like Microsoft and Sony and all that there. Fanboys, what you have to realise is, you're defending these companies to your death. You're saying, oh, Sony's the greatest, they offer the best games, they offer the best customer service. At the end of the day, they don't care about us. They don't care about their customers, they don't care about the people that they're affecting with their decisions to do with their consoles and their games. All they care about is lining their own pockets with money. They want to have more money for them to do whatever they want. But the difference between them and a Christian is that each day we are living for God. We don't need money in our hands to keep us happy. We don't need masses amount of money. We don't need fancy cars. We don't need fancy houses. We don't need all these trivial things that so many people depend on each day. We don't need to have the latest technology. We don't need to have the latest clothes. We don't need to be completely rich because we know that we are rich with God. We are rich with Jesus. And when we die, we have so much waiting for us because we have lived our lives each day for them. And Living like Jesus is showing people compassion, it's treating others how we would like to be treated. And when you really think about it, would you be treating others the way Microsoft will be treating us if all these things are true? I would really hope not. I would really hope not. I would hope nobody would treat anyone the way Microsoft will be treating us and everybody else if this all comes true. But anyway guys, thank you for so much for taking the time to watch this. I really did not plan this to go the way that it did. Um, I normally just start talking and then whatever comes out, I would then repeat and make sure it's all right and whatever. It sounds very nice and perfect. So if you like me being all perfect and super awesome, please like and subscribe guys because it means so much. I love to see my view counter go up and I love to see my subscriber base go up so slowly. Even if it's only like a subscriber a week, it means so much for me. Because I'm just kind of trying to be like this light in the darkness of YouTube. But anyway guys, my name is Jagged Potato. Thank you so much for watching. I am a Christian, and I will see you all next time.